Hello and welcome to Design Education Talks, the collaboration with the New Art School and Design the Dutch Podcast. Our guest today is Marcelo Magalhaes. Welcome, Marcelo. Welcome, Lefteris. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for this fantastic space you have in Design Education Talks. It's fantastic to have you here. So Thank tell you, us likewise. You. Tell us about your new work. Look, Lefter, is uh, very recently uh, we started an enterprise. It's called Speakeasy Knowledge Brokers. It's uh, it's a, a design consultancy, innovation design brand consultancy, and uh, it it comes with a twist because it's not based on the traditional uh, structure as we see cons- design consultancies. Uh, we've built a network of um, independent talents across the world. So we are now around 250 uh, professionals, designers, uh, strategists, anthropologists, people that are somehow keen on brand innovation. And we assemble teams and work uh, depending and build these these teams bespoke to the needs of uh, uh, projects. So it's been a a lovely uh, couple of years. Fantastic, fantastic. And and uh, what is your latest project you're working on? Well, we are developing, well, some of the projects are very strategic. So we, we tend to be more in the upstream uh, side of innovation. So um, in general, uh, I could I, I could give you some, uh, uh, some input in, in general. Uh, we are working now with a big uh, consumer good company, a global consumer good companies. We are helping them to unlock what we call their innovation funnel. So we are building, helping them to build the strategic view for the future and helping them to feed this innovation funnel with products and communication platforms uh, uh, for their brands onwards. Fantastic, excellent. And so tell us about your journey into education. Okay, so um, I've graduated in communication, Left Harris. that was, Many years ago, so now I'm revealing <laughs> my age here, but uh, in the early 90s, uh, I've uh, graduated in, in, in marketing and communication uh, back in Brazil. Uh, and after that, you know, I kept continuously visiting the academia somehow. So I have uh, uh, two masters in communication, being one in research in communication, the other one in, in communication management. And more recently, uh, here in Chicago, I've, uh, uh, I've graduated uh, as a master in design, uh, that they call it MDM, Master in Design Methods, which was an eye-opener, uh, especially for this business model I've just told you about for, for uh, opening up uh, Speakeasy. And uh, well, uh, from more from an academic point of view, I've been teaching uh, brand strategy now for more than 15 years uh, for uh, the um, Miami Ad School. It's a, it's a very well known in the market, uh, a very well known creative school in the market. Started in Brazil, and nowadays I'm a kind of a, 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 an invited instructor for uh, some specific uh, classes uh, here in the United States. Uh-huh. Fantastic. So what what you see what has changed over fifteen years? Wow, so many things have changed uh, left there. I think one of the the main important things uh, that that has changed throughout uh, this a couple of decades that I've been uh, in the market is the uh, the variety and the amount of communication uh, disciplines given. Uh, the advancements of technology, but also in terms of uh, people's behavior, right? So uh, it's amazing to see how, from a media standpoint, of uh, standpoint, um, originally we would think in the 90s we would be thinking more about you know magazines and and TV and and movie theaters, and nowadays you know it's it's countless the amount of different channels. Uh, a brand can communicate is countless. So you may be asking me, what does it has to do with design? I think design nowadays plays a a paramount role in helping to organize what we call this um, communication ecosystem. 
there is a whole communication ecosystem where it's no longer possible for a, um, an organization or a brand to come to choose, pick and choose five or four different channels and establish a relationship with its audience. And, and we are not even uh, no longer talking about audience, right? It's a, it's a two way conversation here. So it's hard to even name the public that is getting messages as audience because they are exchanging messages and establishing a conversation with uh, organizations. And that's something that somehow many people struggle to realize. Fantastic. How would you, what would you say to aspiring uh, students and graduates uh, in order to uh, make the transition from, from their studies into, into the market these days? Oh, look, Lefteris, I, you know, I have, I have a son who is exactly in that age. And it's funny that you say so, because we were having a conversation today and I told him the importance of, you know, uh, keeping an eye open and being curious about things, you know. Um, so that's, to me, that's the first, uh, and, and maybe if I had to just give one advice, that would be to keep really curiosity uh, sparking, because that, that's what moves people uh, in design and, and towards, uh, let's say, innovation. If you're not curious, if you're not asking questions, if you're not learning how to ask those questions, uh, very likely you become uh, obsolete in a world that has, you know, changing beyond imagination. So being curious, you know, building up what, what we call the repertoire is, uh, is something uh, very important for professionals who are starting their career right now. And it's a fantastic moment for design, Lefteris, because I think just like, you know, engineering in, in many decades ago were, uh, you know, game changers, especially in the marketplace, especially for companies. I do believe design is taking over that role, is silently taking over that role. Gone are the days where a designer was somebody who, you know, would come up with aesthetic uh, 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 conceptions or you know ergonomic or aesthetic conceptions of things towards more uh, of a of a, a point of view uh, of of our society somehow, and that that's not only applicable to uh, a private company; that's also public. You know, so many what we call the wicked problems of our society are depending of a more let's say well structured. Uh, um, view of this world. So all the challenges in terms of, you know, living in big cities or even considering the, the terrible uh, pandemics we are going through, uh, that requires uh, a, a huge amount of uh, observation, curiosity by all means, but also the skills that uh, the, the more strategic side of designing is pushing and developing in talents. Fantastic. The, the world has changed a lot. But what is the one skill that has remained constant and that graduates need to have these days? Oh, I think it's uh, putting people at the center. It's, uh, it's the most important thing. And I don't think that's exclusively for design, but that's mainly uh, important in design. You know, again, as a, as a comparison, when the Bauhaus school started to, uh, you know, uh, push people and call people's attention to put the, the human at the center of everything that is done, as opposed to, you know, being so uh, obsessed about the objects, that's where I think that, that a big uh, shift in the, in the area of design came up. And, and that is, you know, the, that is only more important as, as time goes. Because uh, if, you, if you're not being able to understand uh, the human needs, uh, the human desires in its complexity, you, you are missing the plot. You, and you are missing that because nowadays, as everything is so interconnected, that not having the, 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 the more holistic picture of uh, and, and putting uh, the, the human at the center of what we develop in design is... Uh, it can be fatal and it can attract all the unintended consequences that you can imagine. You know, just to give a, a quick example, something that I'm studying more closely nowadays is the, the issue with, you know, the digital media and the social medias, 
right? You have designers coding and thinking of uh, something that nowadays is, is, is very fancy, which is the user experience. But if you're not thinking of the consequences of that algorithm or that, that kind of coding you are building, uh, you can end up with you know, several uh, big troubles in politics, in economics, you know, problems that we are all you know, reading on a daily basis in the press. So you know, putting human at the center of everything you do and making sure that you can uh, be a connector of different expertises and talent is, uh, is paramount. And that's no, no, uh, uh, you know, no wonder why our company, Speakeasy, has a second name, which is Knowledge Broker. So design, the designers are being pushed more than being, you know, in the craft to, to be this, this kind of a, a connectors who can see a system, who can bring the talents and the expertise in the right time at the right amount uh, to make sure that you have a more holistic uh, uh, outcome of that design or that innovation. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, fantastic. So if you could do anything at all in education, in, in advertising education, if you could change with a magic wand, what would you change Wow, I yeah, that's that's a, a fantastic question. Thanks for that, if there is. I think you know I would I would open up a little bit the fields of knowledge that people have. So again, you know, uh, a radical change uh, in education, especially in design, uh, in in communication as well. Uh, that I I wish we can see in our uh, uh, lifespan is. Um, you know, graduation courses or, you know, specialization courses that really can show how people can work with the diversity of talents. You know, somehow it's a miss that we see in so many uh, um, education institutions that instead of opening up uh, the talents and the students for the diversity of subjects and experiences, it shuts down, you know, it, it places uh, everyone that has something in common together and you keep, it's like almost like the information you get serving from uh, social media. You know, the more you investigate that, the, the sharper your algorithm get. So the narrowest you get in terms of different views of the world. And, and in times where we keep talking so much about the importance of, you know, the, the representation of a diverse view, you know, uh, if if the, the programs in, in education, especially in design, but not only, uh, could uh, offer a more diverse view, a better uh, exchange in terms of different uh, um, uh, expertises, that, that would be fantastic. I think half of the, the big problems of unintended consequences in, in design that we have nowadays could be avoided, you know. It's no longer possible if there is to, you know, to think of an innovation project without considering uh, so many, you know, aspects that in the past we wouldn't consider, like the, the legal implications, the uh, environmental implications, the political implications, the socio-economical implications of that. So this, you know, wider uh, array of frame of reference for students is, is something that should be you know, invested in their early stages of uh, education. And I'm not just saying undergrad, I, I would go, you know, to primary school and even, you know, fundamental school, if you will. There are fantastic examples of schools that have been sort of a, of course, they won't call it design, but the principles of design, the principles of understanding the society in a more holistic, in a more, let's say, diverse way is already there. And, and we need to invest and push uh, uh, for the, the, you know, the, the education institutions to, to go there. Absolutely, absolutely. So, also, how can our viewers and listeners find you? Okay, so... Um, I'm I'm not super into the you know the, the the social media thing, but they can find me on LinkedIn, Marcelo with double L Magalhães on LinkedIn. Um, I can I can give you my email if someone wants to you know reach out to me directly. It's Marcelo M A R C E L L O 
at speakeasykb.com. So if anyone wants to have a chat, you know, know better about uh, what I've been doing, what my company is uh, trying to achieve, please feel free to reach out. I would love, you know, again, staying open for new people, new views is, is the, the kind of a secret ingredient of any designer and innovator. So I should walk the talk. <laughs> and any last piece of advice you'd like to leave us with? Oh, Okay, um, I, I think, again, you know, I think it's, it's so important to be, uh, I'll get back to the first question you, you, you asked me, Lefteris, uh, if you can stay open and curious about the things in your life, and it doesn't take much, I'm not talking about reading 20 different newspapers a day, you know, only by taking a, a kind of a, a different stride when it's possible, when, when the lockdown is not so, so hard. But if we can find different paths uh, to very sort of a, um, a usual uh, um, uh, journeys we do, that is already opening up our minds to, to different experiences. You know, be curious about other people, other people's uh, passions and lives, because again, you know, the, the very raw material uh, of being creative, of being, uh, a good designer is is really you know uh, being open uh, to a wider repertoire that is you know understanding the human nature by being curious by you know investigating about that is uh, uh, is is at the essence of of what we try to do in design and innovation. Thank you ever so much for your time, Marcelo. It was fantastic. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Lefteris. Connecting also about the the projects coming up. Absolutely. Have a fantastic day. The best. Bye. Thank you.